coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. Senate confirms Brian Bedford to lead FAA. Sean Duffy appointed interim NASA Administrator. WB-57s put to work mapping Texas flood. Welcome to Airborne Unlimited. I'm your host, Holland Lee. Let's get into today's stories. Senate confirms Brian Bedford to lead FAA. The Senate confirmed Brian Bedford to become the next administrator of the FAA in a near party line 53 to 43 vote. Bedford takes over the agency during a critical time when safety issues have become prominent and Congress has approved initial funding for the complete overhaul of the air traffic control system that's slated to be completed in the next three to four years. Industry leaders and Republicans praise Bedford's nomination while pointing to his extensive experience leading several regional airlines for 30 years. Senator Ted Cruz, chairman of the Senate Commerce Committee, said the FAA is, quote, sorely in need of his steady leadership and executive experience, end quote. Democrats and flight safety advocates opposed his selection, primarily based on his lack of commitment to the 1,500-hour requirement for pilots that was put into place by Congress after a 2009 plane crash near Buffalo, New York. During his confirmation hearing, Bedford declined to commit to uphold that rule, saying only that he would, quote, not have anything that will reduce safety, end quote. In the Colgan crash near Buffalo that led to the creation of the 1,500-hour rule, both pilots had more than 2,000 hours of flight time, so that would have made no difference in that instance. In addition, the NTSB did not conclude the pilots were inexperienced. Bedford has said the rule is wrongly focused on the quantity rather than the quality of training. After the break, another illegal drone and TFR hits helicopter forcing emergency landing. I'm currently using the Hartzell Talon, by far the best aerobatic propeller ever come out. I use the Trailblazer. It adds performance to the Super Decathlon and dependability, and it's rugged. Hartzell's been an excellent partner for Whip Air, just in terms of your product support, as well as keeping an eye on the market and developing new products that meet demand. It's helping us all have better performing airplanes. It's such a proud honor to fly behind that propeller. Meet the first of a new generation of the M-Class family. The M700 Fury. An aircraft worthy of the name and indomitable force. The M700 Fury transcends traditional limits with more power, blistering performance, a finely appointed interior, and the luxury of what matters most, time. Experience the Fury. Join the legacy. Welcome back. Now let's take a trip around the patch for some shorter stories. Another illegal drone and TFR hits helicopter forcing emergency landing. We don't know when all drone pilots will get the message, but we are fearful that at some point a pilot illegally flying a drone will cause a mid-air collision with tragic results. Fortunately for a helicopter pilot flying over Kerr County, Texas, searching for victims of the catastrophic flooding along the Guadalupe River, he was able to perform a successful emergency landing without injury. A social media post by Kerrville City Hall stated that a private drone illegally operating in restricted airspace collided with a helicopter involved in emergency operations in Kerr County. The helicopter was forced to make an emergency landing. KidVenture educational activities line up at EAA AirVenture 2025. KidVenture is located just north of the EAA Aviation Museum at Pioneer Airport and has arranged a myriad of activities for young people to explore all areas of aviation and aerospace. The fun things will include learning about aviation and space history, experiencing flight through simulators, flying radio-controlled airplanes, hands-on building projects, and many other fun activities. The KidVenture area will be open Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. and Sunday from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. 21 commercial space launches in June set a new record. Commercial space flight continues its ascendancy with a new record of 21 launches in June, breaking the previous record of 20 set in November 2024. SpaceX eclipsed all other launch services by far with 15 of the flights, not counting the suborbital test flights of its Starship heavy launch vehicle. The other three commercial operators are Blue Origin with one, Rocket Lab with four, and the United Launch Alliance with one. The FAA said in an email statement, quote, operations during the record month include 21 launches conducted by four operators, Blue Origin, Rocket Lab, SpaceX, and ULA, end quote. 
TSA ends shoes off policy. A long-standing rule of the TSA is done after Homeland Security Secretary Christy Nome announced the end to the shoes off screening. According to the organization, the new policy will, quote, increase hospitality for travelers and streamline the TSA security checkpoint process, leading to lower wait times, end quote. It's a rare spot of good news in the world of air travel after decades of headaches. Secretary Nome said, quote, ending the shoes off policy is the latest effort DHS is implementing to modernize and enhance traveler experience across our nation's airports, end quote. That's it for today's trip around the patch. Let's get back to the rest of the news. Sean Duffy appointed interim NASA administrator. President Trump appointed U.S. Secretary of Transportation Sean Duffy to take the reins as interim administrator of NASA in a move Trump said reflects the rising priority of space in national interests. In a post on Truth Social, President Trump said, quote, I'm pleased to announce that I'm directing our great Secretary of Transportation Sean Duffy to be interim administrator of NASA. He will be a fantastic leader of the ever more important space agency, even if only for a short period of time, end quote. The president had praise for Duffy's performance at the DOT, saying his work so far has been tremendous and mentioning his handling of the country's transportation affairs, including the start of rebuilding the ATC system while also rebuilding roads and bridges, quote, making them efficient and beautiful again, end quote. Duffy has been a longtime supporter of Trump, and he wrote on X enthusiastically, quote, honored to accept this mission, time to take over space, let's launch, end quote. Meanwhile, the search continues for a permanent administrator for NASA, as Duffy replaces Janet Petro, who has been serving as acting NASA administrator since January. After these messages, WB-57's put to work mapping Texas flood. The legendary BD-4C program is building an exciting future for those who want a rugged four-seat family flyer with a proven history. The SureWings program produces a complete kit and builder assist program that gives you everything you need to be flying a BD-4CS in record time. For conventional kit builders, BD Aviation has parts, partial kits, and full kits for the 190 mile per hour BD-4C that has logged thousands of hours. Visit SureWings.com and BDAviation.com for more details. Welcome back. WB-57's put to work mapping Texas flood. NASA's old school WB-57 got a workout this week with a novel mission for the classic aircraft, emergency assessment of the devastated Texas Hill Country. The high altitude WB-57 has been a trusty workhorse for NASA over the years, flying since the early 70s. The WB-57 is a mid-wing, long-range aircraft capable of pulling off lengthy missions above 60,000 feet, derived from the old Martin B-57 bomber of yore. As it happens, NASA deployed two WB-57s dispatched under the NASA Disasters Response Coordination System to help obtain crystal clear imagery of the affected region. Cloud cover in the area has rendered much of the satellite data useless, so the WB-57s began aerial surveys with their dynamite or day-night airborne motion imager for terrestrial environments sensor testing. That tied into real-time collection and analysis on the ground, helping responders direct their efforts to where it's most needed without the need for post-flight processing. NASA highlighted the use of their uninhabited aerial vehicle synthetic aperture radar aboard a Gulfstream 3. That team plans to take observations of the Guadalupe, San Gabriel, and Colorado River basins through the rest of the week, thanks to its ability to penetrate vegetation. Their flights will help to define the extent of the flooding. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne. And don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.